Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl, The Flash, and the future of the Arrowverse. Today we're going to be talking about Kyla Lee's Alex Danvers, who has just recently appeared in the two latest episodes of Armageddon, The Flash's crossover. So she's come out, and there's lots of comments online from Kyla. She did an interview with CBR.com, and that's what we're going to be basing most of this video off of, which sees her talking a lot about the future of her character. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this interview will be linked in the description below. It's relatively long, and it's relatively in detail. We're going to be going through all of the questions that were asked, and all of Kyla's answers and we're gonna go through it bit by bit and break it down and what it could mean so let's go ahead and get into this article so it begins like this and this is just CBR talking plenty of familiar faces from across the Arrowverse return for the Flash's crossover event Armageddon among several returning heroes is Alex Danvers played by Kyla Lee aka her crime-fighting alter ego Sentinel Alex's appearance in The Flash allowed Lee to find a level of closure with the character without the emotional weight that came with her initial goodbye to the role in the Supergirl series finale. While Barry Allen finds himself in an unsettling vision of the Arrowverse, Alex remains steadfast in her commitments to help Team Flash. In an exclusive interview with CBR, Lee reflected on how she wanted Alex Danvers to appear in Armageddon. She also shared about how her return helped her process Supergirl's conclusion and express her hopes in Alex resurfacing someday in the Arrowverse's future. So the first question is this, logistically, how quick a turnaround was it to wrap on Supergirl and then return as Alex Danvers for The Flash? Kyla goes on to say, it was a few weeks, we wrapped Supergirl on August 6th and then around mid-September, I flew back to Canada to prep and get ready for The Flash. It was only a few weeks. The next question is this, how did that affect your processing rapping Supergirl? You already had the big emotional send-off with Melissa Benoist, David Harewood, and Azzy Tesfaye at that point. Kyla says, it was trippy, I'll be honest. It was a really tough season last year. Just knowing that it was our last and getting that word a little bit late and with COVID, everything made the last season a little bit funky and I felt like it took away a lot of the experience we could have had. And then it being done, it was really emotional. Azzy and I kept joking that since David had officiated Chris Wood and Melissa's wedding, he officiated our wedding in the Supergirl series finale. So are we married? So she definitely brings up a very valid point in regards to maybe Supergirl's ending feeling a bit inconclusive because she brings up that with them getting the word that the finale is going to be the final episode ever came pretty late for them. And also with the COVID restrictions, they couldn't interact as usual like they were the previous like five, six years or so. So ending like that, naturally you might feel like, you know, some of that finale experience has been taken away and clearly Kyla wasn't 100% satisfied with it. Although as she mentions, it's not to say that it wasn't emotional because it definitely was. She goes on to say this. It definitely wore me out, talking about the whole season. I was planning to hang there even before I knew that the flash was happening because we still have a house up there that we we're renting for now. I was going to hang up there for a minute, but my husband was like, just for your mental health, I think we should go home for a bit. Let's reset and get you resting for a minute and we'll go from there. So a couple of days before I wrapped on Supergirl, they called me about the flash after getting a bit of a reset I thought it would be good because it gives me the chance to really be Alex again, be the sentinel side of Alex, but still the heart and everything that I love about her so much that was there. I feel like I got a second chance to go out in a way that wasn't as emotional where I could just stand alone and feel like this was a cool way to wrap it up. So I like what she says here because, you know, filming a whole season of a TV show is a lot. That's like eight to nine months straight in a year. Yes, you get a couple of breaks here and there, but you have to realize these actors aren't necessarily all from there. So they've gone away. They've stayed in this completely different place for like nine months, pretty much most of the year. And so getting a reset going back home, I presume her home is in LA. That's definitely needed and, you know, 
I know from experience from working on film sets is very exhausting even to work on a film for like a week or so. So imagine working nine months, that is a hell of a lot of time. But then Kyla goes on to talk about how when she wrapped on Supergirl and got the call to be on The Flash, she was very excited because she thought that she could get like a second chance to say goodbye to Alex, even though there's potential for her to return in the future. But this way it would be a bit less emotional and it would just be a cool way to wrap it up because she's in a crossover and it's not like the be all end all. Basically this gives us hope for the future that maybe Alex can return again and I think Kyla is in a similar mindset or at least she was when she was filming The Flash. So let's move on to the next question from CBR. They say, one of the through lines thematically on Supergirl was the truth and the truth about finding love which you deliver in scenes here on The Flash. How was it embodying those scenes and imparting that wisdom? Kyla says, I was so grateful. It was funny because originally Eric Wallace, the showrunner, hadn't seen the last couple of episodes of Supergirl, so he was going in a little bit of a different approach, which was really cool, but it had Alex on a bit more of a down in the dump and a little bit more cynical towards love. I called him up saying that we should talk and told him this is where we were at with a huge emotional wedding at the end of Supergirl. He was like, oh my gosh, we really had a great conversation about it. It really just inspired him and he went, this is so much better than I originally thought and I'm really proud because it gives Alex a chance to be a beacon of hope and love in a way that really respects who Alex is and her journey and also can come across as someone who is already encouraging for Allegra and Chester. It just gave me a great sense for her to come in a little bit in that mama bear role and impart all that she's gone through to give that wisdom and tough love was fun. I always love being tough Alex when I get to yell at people, it's awesome. So very nice comments here from Kyla and talking about how like Eric Wallace, the showrunner of The Flash, hadn't watched the final few episodes of Supergirl and as you guys know now that we've seen the Supergirl series finale, she ends it in a big way and she is full of love especially with the wedding you know you had that great scene at the end where we had Melissa and Jeremy singing and you had Azzy walking down the aisle and Alex just looking absolutely over the moon with what's happening obviously that's played by Kyla and so yeah I really really loved that last episode she kind of continued that storyline that was set up and where Alex is emotionally at the end of Supergirl that's where she picks up from on the flash and you know it's very good that they acknowledge that and Kyla feels so passionately about the character that she's willing to call up the flash showrunner and be like look this is what's up this is not my character and my character ended in a different way so please can we change this and they worked out and I think that's all for the better and I know her scenes with Allegra and Chester were kind of not taken in the best way only because I think the Allegra and Chester pairing is a complete and obvious setup for them to be paired in the next few episodes on The Flash in 2021 rather than 2031. And so it feels a little bit weird to be placed in the episode where we're not going to see these versions of the characters again and it's more of just like a tease. But I will say Alex's involvement in this made those scenes good because it made sense and you know it pretty much confirms any version of Alex would give such advice like this no matter if it's our Alex or not so this is what CBR says in the next question speaking of badass action Alex we just started to see Alex really come into her own as a superhero towards the end of Supergirl how was it putting the Sentinel outfit back on and mixing it up with the characters on the flash Kyla says I'll be very honest I'm just glad it's still fit because I rested and went through a lot of emotional eating. I thought, this definitely tightened up in the archives. That's what happens. The last day on Supergirl when we did the huge showdown with all of us in super suits, you've got 20 people lined up in leather. You're always laughing because it's great, but we look so silly. None of us processed the fact that this was the last time we were going to be in those suits. So even that was super emotional because it was my goodbye to Sentinel and it came out of nowhere. At least that's how I felt at the time. It was like, this is it. Don't walk away. Everybody needs to get together for a picture. It was emotional and really sad giving back my costume and hanging it up back in my trailer like I was letting it go. To have the chance to put that suit back on, I walked onto the set and everybody went, 
we think you have the coolest suit and I was like damn right I do and it was pretty cool. So this is Kyla acknowledging her wearing the superhero costume and I've said this many times but it's been so great to see Kyla as Alex fully suited up in a superhero costume and going out with Supergirl like a proper vigilante. She properly became Sentinel in the final season. Whereas before she was always just Alex Danvers and she was a member of the DEO and she had a gun and you know she could take down people but she was never properly a superhero. But in the last couple of seasons she's led up to this big moment where she is a proper superhero. And now even in this episode of The Flash where she showed up, so Armageddon Part 4, she was part of that big suit up moment where everyone suits up including Alex and so she is one of the main superheroes in the Arrowverse, even if it took a long time for her to get there. So let's move on to the next question. The next question is this, another familiar face behind the camera is Chad Lowe who helmed a couple of episodes of Supergirl. How was it having him as a director on this episode? Kyla says, I absolutely adore Chad. He is so sweet and he's got such a great vision, but it's always so hard to try and do any of that crossover stuff. From an acting standpoint, him being a director on Supergirl and to see him here, I was super relieved. Some of the actors on The Flash I've worked with before and you really never know. Walking onto someone else's set, what the vibe is. We worked really hard on Supergirl to maintain a really respectful, efficient, kind and fun set because we're all working together so long and just as hard. So don't be an asshole. I was really glad because the crew is just so fantastic over there and all the actors that I got to work with, we had so much fun. I felt like it was a really nice transition over there to spend that time and Chab was another lovely face to see for sure. So let's move on to the next question. Unlike Arrow, which closed the book definitively for Oliver Queen, may he rest in peace, you and the Supergirl cast are still kicking. Would you be open to returning as Alex again? And Kyla says, and this is the final question, in a heartbeat. I would do it all over again and I'm still rooting for a Kelly and Alex spin-off. I don't know, I'm just saying I'm rooting for it. You didn't see Kelly and Alex ride off into the sunset but hop onto their bikes to go save other people. Esme would love that. I'd love to throw that around and get that trending. I would honestly really do it in a heartbeat. I love Alex and everything that I got to build with her and how I grew as a person and the love that I have for my family is the love that I was also able to embody through her. I'd absolutely love to put that suit back on and I just have to shed a few pounds again. I kind of went back on an eating kick. So this final question is the exact reason why I am making this video because she is asked, do you want to come back and would you be open to return in the future as Alex? And the fact that she really emphasizes she would come back in a heartbeat is fantastic. But I think the icing on the top of the cake is this, Kyla is rooting for a Kelly and Alex spinoff. This would be fantastic and I've said for the last couple of months, couple of weeks, however long it's been since Supergirl ended, that we need a Supergirl spin-off. Yes, Superman Lois is a Supergirl spin-off, but it came before Supergirl ended with no characters that were regulars on the show. So it would be lovely to have some sort of spin-off with some regulars from the show and the fact that maybe it could be Alex Danvers and Kelly having their own Guardian and Sentinel spin-off show, I don't know what they would specifically call it, that would be fantastic. I would totally be in for that and I'm sure most of you guys would because Alex Danvers is one of my favorite characters in the Arrowverse and I think it's just a huge shame that Supergirl ended for a lot of these characters only because people like Alex and people like Nia, I feel like they were just getting into their rhythm and in the case of Alex, they even bring it up in this interview. She's only really just become a proper superhero and now she doesn't have that chance to appear week to week as a hero alongside Guardian. Also Kelly just became Guardian as well, literally in the back half of Supergirl season six. So I would love to have more time exploring those two together. Also seeing Esme would be fantastic because we only saw her at the end as well. So I feel like there's a lot of strings that can be pulled and it's very relevant that the entire Supergirl cast of characters are still around, obviously excluding William, God rest his soul. So I think it would be a very, very great opportunity for the CW or HBO Max or anyone to pick up and continue Supergirl somehow with a spin-off. Now, another idea for spin-offs 
is the Legion of Superheroes. This has definitely been one that fans have been asking for, and I think it's even more than a Kelly and Alex spin-off, but I'm saying Legion of Superheroes, but include Kelly and Alex and make them official members alongside Nia and Brainy and a couple of other new characters. Like even on The Flash, they just announced that they're doing a Legion of Superheroes character on the show. And so why wouldn't you continue Supergirl's legacy with a Legion show? And considering the fact that the Legion has been referenced so many times, mainly because mon is a member, Wynn is a member, Emra was a member, and she showed up in the past, why can't we go to that future and have our Supergirl characters continue on from there? I think that would be a great opportunity. But once again, I just have to reiterate, it's great to see Kyla so into the character and the idea that she wants to continue to appear no matter how hard it is and how tiring it is she loves the character and in some way she's able to act as herself and implement you know the different things that she feels as a person into her character and imbue it with her love that she has for her own real life family and sort of implement it on Supergirl and maybe in the future. So Kyla kind of expanded a little bit in another interview with the rap we're just going to quickly go over this as we reach the end of the video because I feel like I need to include it because there are some different quotes although it's not as big as the CBR article so this will be in the link in the description below so this is coming from the rap this is how it goes and I mean it's just like a whole bunch of quotes and the rap talking in between so I'll be honest I would go back in a heartbeat I would she also confirmed that in the CBR article like I said pretty similar but she goes on to say I just love Alex and I love being a part of the CW slash DC family and whatnot. And I'm still having a hard time thinking like, how am I ever going to stand the same? Because I think I'm always going to have the Alex stance. I've got to think from a fr I've got to think from a physical standpoint. I'm going to have to somehow untrain how to be a superhero. She goes on to say, to be able to be Alex and everything that I've spent six years building and to be able to step onto someone else's set and just stand confidently in that. It just made it really fun to kind of play with the different nuances. The rap goes on to say, granted for Supergirl fans it might be a bit bittersweet seeing Sentinel working with a new set of super friends even temporarily, but for Lee herself it was really just a lot of fun, particularly because she got an up close look at those people's super suits. So Kyla goes on to say, you get to see everybody's suits, and you go, wow, yours does this? Cool, mine does that, Lee recounted. And all of a sudden, your children again, you're playing dress up. You're playing make-believe, so it was fun to do it with different people because you almost get a kind of see, oh, okay, that's your take, and like, oh, this is how I stand, and it's not like you're critical, it's just like, wow. This is what you've come up with over the last few years, and you've been in these super suits, or these characters. To be clear, yes, Lee did miss not having Nicole Maines and Melissa Benoist and the rest of the cast by her side. Still though, she had a ball. It's definitely different not having... I didn't have Dreamer and Brainy, obviously, you know, Supergirl or Jean. It's just like, Kara, slash Supergirl, and Jean, and that's just weird. The OGs, right? It's definitely strange, but I've had enough dealings where I've been beaten up bad guys on my own and then been able to join up with others outside of what I've already done was really cool. So you kind of get the gist of this interview. It's a bit more confusing the way it's worded. Don't know if that's just an editing thing with the person who's, you know, actually typing out what Kyla's responses were. It's clear that she's excited to be there with the flash cast and, you know, all the different returning heroes. However, it's also very clear that she's missing, you know, her Supergirl family, Melissa, David, and everyone, which is completely natural given all of the circumstances surrounding her returning to The Flash, obviously right after Supergirl has ended, and everyone else has already gone home, but she is sticking around. So that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. It really helps out the channel and you won't miss any videos. Obviously, we got the Flash Armageddon Part 5 
which is continuing on Tuesday. That will be the mid-season finale for The Flash, so we won't be getting any more Flash after that episode until March. But talking of Supergirl spin-offs, Superman and Lois Season 2 just released their new trailer. They are going to be premiering sometime in January, relatively close to the start of January. So obviously we're going to make Superman and Lois videos considering that Supergirl is not around. We did it last year, but this year we'll be making them week to week absolutely not missing a single episode but we can just keep our fingers crossed right now for some more Supergirl crossovers in the future with returning characters like Alex, Dreamer, Brainy and I mean the list continues on and on and on but the big eventual goal is to have Melissa return as Supergirl obviously which may happen like a couple years down the line but that's about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching and for now I'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.